Hi everyone, Redneck Computer Geek here. Finishing up the last couple of touches on the gas powered power wheel. But I wanted to go and do a video on this Go Plus MIG 130. It's a great little welder. I'm very impressed. I've worked with a bunch of different lower end 110 welders. Um, I have a Campbell stick welder from Walmart that I really like. And I also have a Hobart 140. Now the Hobart 140 when I originally bought it was about a $800 110 welder. Nowadays they can be picked up on sale for like 500 bucks if you really watch around. But these little welders here are about $110 on Amazon right now. They ship for about six to $10. And they come with a two pound spool of .03 wire. That wire was garbage. It was absolute horrible hell to work with and it filled the whole shop full of smoke. You probably saw some of my videos where it was just absolutely a haze in here. That was that wire. Actually, since working with that, um, I talked with a few people that have used these in the past and I ended up with this Inatube, I-N-E-T-U-B, .03 wire. Um, it works really well, makes a lot less of a hazy smoke and stuff like that. And it doesn't set off my asthma like the original welding wire that came with this did. Um, like I said, I really like it. It does come with this little helmet here. Um, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but it's all pitted and everything. That's because I've been allowing the kids to use it when they're watching me while I grind and stuff like that. Because when kids have a small head... It's hard to find glasses that fit them correctly, and getting hit in the face sucks. So I let them use this to be able to watch. It works good. It's definitely not as nice as, say, a $40 Harbor Freight Welder helmet. Um, I love these auto-darkening $40 helmets. A side note I'll say about this is that the plexiglass that they use in the front you can pick it up by like the 12 by 12 and 24 by 24 sheet at just about any hardware store and you can slice it down into a ton of these so you can replace them willy nilly whenever it is it catches splatter. So this is what I use when I'm in underneath a vehicle and I know the stuff's coming down on my face. I've owned this for about four years now. I love it. Um, it's starting to show its age and I'll probably replace it soon but it's a really good helmet to start with. So we're gonna go and take a look at this and talk about a few things that I like, a few things I don't like. On the way the gun works, it's very quick on the trigger. There is very little movement before it clicks and it starts moving. Um, the throw on this is extremely short compared to my Hobart 140, and I like it, but it also means if you're wearing, um, if you're used to not wearing gloves and you go to wear big welding gloves, it's very easy just to tap it and have it go off. The other thing is that it's got this weird problem, and you can actually see there's pot marks on there. And for some reason, this is charged or it's acting as a ground. And so I've ended up wrapping it in black tape so that I can use it up against something when I'm welding into a small little area. Just a little side note. Um, the grounding clamp on this is about the cheapest possible metal you could ever possibly make. I'm pretty sure a tin can is thicker than this. Does it work? Yes. After three months, does it have all kinds of grunge and issues with grounding? Yes. This will be one of the first things that I upgrade. You can buy a decent set of clamps like what I upgraded my 140 with for about seven bucks on Amazon, and I'll be upgrading that. The electrical cord and everything for plugging into the 110 is actually a really decent quality cord. It's a good gauge, never seems to heat up, and I really like it. The one issue that I have is I wish that the electrical cord actually came out the back instead of the front. That was probably a design thing due to the way the circuits are inside. And we're going to take a look at popping this panel off later because it comes with fuses. And there is nowhere on the outside of this to pop a fuse in and there's no way, nowhere underneath this to pop a fuse in. So we're going to take a look at that. 
The one thing that I really like also is that the controls are extremely simple. You've got a minimum and then a one toggle. You've got your speed control for your wire. I found that the wire seems to actually run best at about four and a half on this. But after reading the reviews, I found almost everybody found a different number that worked for them. It didn't seem very consistent. So four and a half was what worked for me. What I discovered was that if I went maximum and then maximum, I had to bump it up to about a five, five and a quarter. But like I said, there seems to be some variance in how these work. Um, we're gonna do a quick little demonstration on a couple of little pieces here in just a sec. But first I'd like to show you the way that the system feeds. All right, so it's got this interesting little system here where you pull this up on both sides. We're gonna see if I can do this one-handed, but you pull this up on both sides and then you lift and you throw that over and you get all the stuff out of it that's unnecessary. And then you've got this. So this is where your wire clamps down. This thing here is insanely irritating to try and get on, but it does work. So you put this piece on first, there's a spring that goes underneath here, and then you've got this piece that screws down on. I found you had to actually press down in the center of it and then twist with your second hand to get it on there. It's a twit, but it works. And then you've got your inlet here. You've got your adjusters for your pressure and everything. Um, this took a little bit of work. And I found that this wire here, even though it says it's the same exact core size as the original wire, was actually a little bit thinner, and I had to adjust this down a bit. And so when you put it in, you've got to put it through this tube and into here. And the other thing I found was that because this is a two pound roll, it's wound extremely tight. And when you would go to put it through, it would keep shooting off to the left-hand side repetitively. And so what I had to do was take and unroll a bit of it and then flatten it out against a board or something or the side of the case and then put it in through in order to get it to go in. But after that, it worked really nice. All right, so here we are. We've got a couple of pieces like your general at-home hobbyist would end up working with. This is a piece of old truck frame that I use for base welds occasionally. As you can see, I've done some burn-ins on it in the past. We got another piece of the same truck frame that we ended up cutting out. Got a little tack weld piece that you might end up using to make a ground. And we've got our standard piece of one inch square stock that we can weld on there. So. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to fire this up, which is as simple as that. And you'll hear the fan fire up and we're going to see if we can get this to ground out a little bit. And like I said, I've been using it for three months. This thing is all charred up and stuff. So the grounds are getting a little cute and we're going to set it minimum and minimum and line it up and we're going to put it grounding piece and there's exactly what I was warning everybody about. For some reason this ends up grounding out and charging out so that needs to be addressed at some point. So there we are. We welded on a little grounding rod like we would on any other large project where we needed a remote ground or something. It's not too bad for that. You can tink a little weld in there and go for it. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take and we're gonna go for maximums. And we're gonna set this piece on here and we're gonna go and give it a nice weld across and we're gonna see what it'll settle like.
Now the point of that was not to say that it will do that thickness. The point of that was to show you behind here that it obviously is not going all the way through. It only ends up going in about an eighth or so. And obviously I could smack that with a hammer and I could break it off. So we'll reground it and then we'll put another line on the other side to hold it and smack it in a vise after this. All right, so here we are, we got it in the vise. We're gonna give it a wallop and see what happens. Well, I'd say that's pretty conclusive that those welds held okay. So there we are, that looks pretty nice. So I'm sure a lot of you are like me and you like to know what the inside of something looks like. So let's pop this open and let's see what we can find. Now I find it interesting that they must intend you to actually get in here at some point because there's actually two extra screws on the lid that as far as I can tell serve no other purpose other than just to be there in, just in case. So there we go, there's what's inside, a big giant transformer, looks like something out of your average microwave. And then down there we've got a circuit board and if you look very carefully you can see right there a clear fuse holder. So that must be what the two extra fuses are for, so you can get to there. Got the knobs on the inside up in there, and the toggle switches, and your lead going out through in the back corner right there. So there we are. It's nothing special, but it gets the job done. There's a lot you can do with a drill and some drill bits and some bolts, but sometimes it just comes down to getting out the welder and working on it. And when you compare the capability of this $110 plus shipping welder versus my Hobart 140, yes, the Hobart definitely is a better welder. At $500, it should be. But this gets done everything that I've needed to do in order to build a winch mount, in order to be able to go and build an exhaust. I've used it to be able to weld up frame rails on my latest build. And I've welded gears in place and a few other little odds and ends projects. A lot of the guys say that this is very capable of doing sheet metal work. And having done a little bit with it myself, unfortunately I didn't take any pictures of it. I would say that yes, it does tack welds for sheet metal very well. The minimum and then the one setting on it works amazing on doing sheet metal welding. It's just a nice all round capable welder. It is ugly as sin, but it does what it's supposed to. Kinda like me. Have fun, share up the video to anybody that needs one of these.